just leaving Cabin Falls. And uh, it was amazing. We're super lucky to have this gorgeous day, just toasty warm. And we went swimming, jumped in the falls, swam at the base of the falls. Bella came in the falls. We had a nice lunch. And uh, you can't really ask for more than that. That was amazing. But uh, unfortunately, it's time to go. And uh, we have to move on because we got to make time. And we've already spent way too long having fun. So now we have to move on to the next destination and the adventure continues. Just approaching Bridal Veil Falls. This is probably it here. Yeah. Wow. Careful. Unbelievable. Absolutely gorgeous, spectacular. What a drop too, beautiful pool and below. And uh, feel 
really fortunate to be able to have this place still wild, still free, and uh, available for us to just come and enjoy. What a gem. That is a spectacular. So oh, the smell of the pines. Mm -hmm. All of them spruce. Mm -hmm. Spruce pine fir. Mm -hmm. My favorite smell, and the smell of the uh, falls. I wasn't getting it that much, but that mist smell. Definitely got it at Cabin Falls. Mm -hmm. yeah, right I love that smell. Yeah. It just like makes you thirsty. It smells like the lifeblood of the world, you know? Just like what just smashed all these rocks apart? Glaciers? Like. The next one, the next one, a, uh, a contour across the river, it might be a portage, which would mean we have a 670 meter portage ahead, which would mean maybe we'll end up camping at Fat Man's Falls <laughs> or in the, the lake below it. There's a gorgeous lake. Well, it's getting late in the day, still beautiful. Uh, we're not in any danger or anything, but uh, we came up after Broadville Falls and there's a long rapid. It's about a 670 meter portage or so. And a contour line crosses the river, which normally means it's gonna be pretty good rapid or uh, there might be a falls. And because some things marked just said rapid that were actually a falls, um, I wasn't sure if we'd be able to scoot down it and so I just ran down the trail a little bit to check and I didn't go all the way but we definitely can safely get down a good chunk of it and I think in all likelihood the whole thing. So um, hopefully we get down this without dying. I'm not going to make it through there. Cross drawing. Okay. Cross draw, cross draw. Cross draw.
Ci. Over there. Hello, we're camped at what's called Fat Man's Falls. Uh, I'm not sure why, maybe because it's a pinch or something and like Fat Man couldn't get down, I don't know. Something, something mean about being fat is my guess. This freaking toe is just killing me. Luckily, I'm managing, but it's, it's slow. Um, you know, normally I can run and rock hop and all that kind of stuff. I'm just like limping and you know, I'm almost injuring myself more because I can't use it and uh, it's, uh, it's killing me. So this is what we got going on here. Sorry to show you my gross pruny feet, but yeah, as you can tell, the one toe is way bigger than the other one. Swollen, uh, ligament damage, possibly broken. Um, everything that you don't want to have happen uh, to your big toe as well. So it's the worst one, I think, for it to happen to you. So, but luckily I'm managing, but it's definitely slowing us down. Anyway, uh, we're losing daylight. The sun has set behind the trees. And I'm just changing on my wet clothes. Heather's changing on her wet clothes. She got the tent set up. Um, I'm going to get a fire going and um, we're gonna put some dinner on. Tastes like lasagna. Yeah. Let's taste like spaghetti. Mm. That would taste the same? Like, no, lasagna is nope. better, I think. Similar.
morning, Heather. Good morning. Did you have a good sleep? I did. It's a nice sleep by the waterfall. Maybe it's that white noise. Yeah, I think it might be. Some people don't like it, some people love it. I love it. I find that there's like no in betweens. <clears throat> and it drowns out the bear snores. <laughs> Well, good morning. Morning of day five. It uh, looks like it's gonna be an absolutely gorgeous day again. Feeling very fortunate for that. A uh, little bit chilly this morning, but not nearly as chilly as yesterday morning. Uh, there's a tiny bit of mist on the river, but nothing like yesterday. Um, and we're starting day off with a portage around a pretty spectacular canyon. First things first, got a fire going, gonna get some coffee on, and uh, get breakfast going, and wrap up camp. One of the uh, crappy things about a river trip where you have to be in and out, get your feet wet. I mean, often canoeing you do, but um, particularly on a river trip with wading and lying and rapids is you got to put your wet stuff back on every morning. And in this case right now is my soaked pants. 
uh, it was too late and we didn't have enough wood to really dry them. And my soaked socks, absolutely soaked, for example, it doesn't get much wetter than that. First thing in the morning, when it's cold out, here we go. <laughs> because you can't just put dry stuff on every day because you can't bring dry stuff. You just have a whole 700 pound pile of soaked clothes. There you have it. One of the most miserable part of the day is over. Like all your weight. So not a long port Charles, but pretty treacherous as has been the theme. Look at this canyon though. amazing so just fishing here by this gorgeous waterfall and this garter snake swims past and I was really blown away how it just reached up out of the water and just climbed straight up the rock wall pretty cool
I'd like to see it. Yeah, there's a rock right in the middle. There's a spire thing. Let's paddle right up to it. Just losing your mind. Fella, get down. Get down. Evelyn River South Ranch now and um, we are just entering the big lake here and we got a pretty good tailwind and it's getting pretty gusty it's picking up uh, we're motoring along here pretty nice so I'm enjoying that hopefully these waves don't build to when it becomes a little dangerous but right now this is great we have just motored across this big lake here with this awesome tailwind we got, we're averaging six and a half kilometers an hour. We'll just paddling like this. I mean, we're not leisurely paddling, but we're not exactly beast paddling either. Right now we're hitting seven kilometers an hour. So pretty freaking good. Um, when you got a tailwind like this, and that's all you could ask for. Of course, if we rigged up a little sail with this direct tailwind behind us, we could be going this speed without even paddling at all or faster. Um, so that's kind of tempting. I've done that before and it's amazing. Anyway, um, getting uh, the wind is on our side, so to speak. Well, we're just entering Sucker Gut Lake from Willow Island. And uh, that tailwind really whipped us across there. We still have it. Hopefully, it carries us right across. Uh, carries us right across Sucker Gut, and um, then we're gonna branch off into uh, Eddie's Hole and uh, looks like Willow Creek and Hobart Lake, and hopefully camp on Hobart Lake. <laughs> a bit of a ways to go, but uh, with this tailwind, we should take advantage of it. 
We did eat lunch at the base of Willow Lake at the mouth of Lady Evelyn, but it's a lot of work getting across. So I'm just having to uh, bar up. Because I've noticed myself getting kind of tired and lazy and pissy. Bella, no, no. Ted caught a walleye. Hold it up. Yeah. Get down. Get down. Go. So just trolling here with a little leech and a weighted hook on Sucker Gut Lake. And I got us a walleye. Yeah. And uh, that's gonna that's gonna be a nice little morsel. So alright, just out in like the middle of the lake must have just hit a sweet spot and uh, hooked into him. So I'm pleased about that. It's always good to have a line in the water, especially when you're canoeing. You don't really have time to stop and just fish all the holes and get everywhere. So it's like a lot of what you're doing is trolling and um, paid off. Yes, we're getting closer. So we're just branching off of the big lakes. And um, yeah, excited for it. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. I can see Maple Mountain in the distance. And there is Maple Mountain. And if you can see that fire tower all the way up there, gonna hike up that, climb that tower get a vantage point of all the surrounding lakes. Yeah, it is. Get out. Right here. We made it. Good job. So we're uh, just in Willow Lake. Uh, there is a nice campsite in Tupper Lake. Uh, which is where the the hike to Maple Mountain is, which we're going to do tomorrow. But there's not, uh, I don't think the fishing is any good in there. So we're going to camp here and we've done enough for today. It was a long day. We probably went about 20 kilometers uh, with a portage. And so uh, we done good. It's about 5.30. And um, it's a good time to stop. Hi, Pams. I like this site. Do you like this spa pumps? Yeah, it's really cool. Is it heather approved? It is definitely heather approved. Sweet. Let's say put our heads here then. On you can still put the opening here, but put our heads here. One here, one here. Feet go this way.
too bad. Good job, babe. See? Fist bump. Here's the little wall I caught just trolling today. Not the biggest, but nice little morsel. One fillet for uh, me, one fillet for Heather. Some nice blue colors to it. No.
it. Wow.
How is it? It's amazing. <laughs> Better than I thought it was going to be. It's really nice to have this after days of pasta and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mmm. The walleye is amazing. Mmm. Lobster mushroom. Straight from the forest, spotted by Heather. Super yummy. Wow. Wow. I keep being surprised by how yummy it is, actually. Everybody I take, just a little bit of butter and um, just a sprinkle of Cajun fish crisp. I'm like, we don't have any spice, so um, what can we add? And obviously you don't want to like batter or fish crisp them up. Just a little sprinkle. But honestly, just, just the butter would have been fine. Um, or or nothing. Be interesting to try them just with nothing. But yeah, a little butter and that little sprinkle of the um, Cajun fish crisp. And they are really good. Just lightly sautéed. Um, I'm very impressed. Never had them before. So it's both first for me and first for Heather. And this is a cool little forest meal we're whipping up here. So got the walleye or pickerel, as we call them in Canada, or many people do. And um, we've got the lobster mushrooms. And we have a sweet fern tea that's cooking right now, or boiling, or brewing. I don't know what you call it, brewing. Sweet fern tea brewing. Steeping? Steeping, yeah. Steeping. It's a nice little forest dinner that we've whipped up. We feel extra cool. Living off the land. Yeah, so pretty good. Oh no, it's not. It's really good. It's actually a very pleasant uh, tea. So if you ever get the chance to make it, it's uh, it's got a lot of health benefits as well. Uh, but it's a good one to make in the uh, in the bush. It's a little something different than like pine needle tea or spruce tea or something like that. This one is a good one. Morning guys. Time to get up. We don't wanna get up. Good morning. Morning of day six. It's, it's technically six, even though day one, we just camped right at the put in, so we didn't really do anything. Um, because we got there late. So it is a rainy day. How rude of it to rain and be overcast on the day where we're supposed to go to a lookout point up on Maple Mountain. Um, not really sure how much we'll be able to see in the surrounding area. 
Um, it does look like I can see out a ways right now, but I mean, Maple Mountain itself is caught in a mist. So that's kind of discouraging. But um, I mean, we're basically already there. So we kind of might as well do it. But yeah, not uh, not the best weather for that. Although it is it is warm and it's not raining crazy hard. So it could be worse, that's for sure. But um, anyway, it's a calm day. It smells nice and hopefully it clears up at some point. It doesn't look like it's gonna clear up for hours though. It's that kind of uh, day. Anyway, time to get the morning chores underway. My uh, toe is really hurting and probably hiking up Maple Mountain isn't really the best idea, uh, but I'm determined to just do it anyway. Um, I do want to climb the fire tower as well, but it's a little bit dangerous and maybe with my toe I shouldn't, I don't know, I've done it before. but. Uh, We'll see. Good morning. Good morning. Day six. It's a rainy day. Of course, today is the day that we're supposed to be walking up to Maple Mountain and having a beautiful view of the surrounding <laughs> landscape. And uh, I can barely see the other end of the lake. So. Mwah, mwah. 
I can still climb the fire tower and piss on something from below, the, below though. My Tootsie Peg is hurting a lot. But it's like, part of me is just like, well, I even bother, but Heather's never been here, and it's pretty cool. And just to say that you did it and to go up and look around, even if it's rainy, it's a pretty awesome, special place. And uh, we're basically just like right at the base of it and paddled all the way here. So it's like, why not just go? Rain, rain, go away, come back another day. As far as rain goes, this isn't the worst. It's, it's warm and it's yeah, not no, raining it's not cold. super hard, right? This is really cool, actually. Mm-hmm. It's foggy and misty. Uh, this is, I say t between today and tomorrow, we try to, like, leave the last day somewhat leisurely. Like, maybe we do just 10K. And then we just take our time, you know, instead of leaving like 60. So maybe or... we should camp like here tonight and then Wednesday, you know, make it to like here uh -huh. and then Thursday just do this channel. Yeah. It's marked on the map as windy. It's probably pretty likely it'll be windy. It doesn't mean we can't paddle, but if it, you could get windbound because it's a big stretch of lake, but there's also a lot of little islands here. Yeah, it looks like we could gonna we be could hide nice behind campsites. You know, so you could kind of hide behind some so depression mm. like well that's sad. <laughs> anyway, it's uh yeah, so <laughs> this is a good map, eh? Yeah, it is. Friends of Tomogamy, get 4. Thanks, um, friends of Tomogamy. You rule. It's because it's waterproof, though. If you're in a pinch, you can't really wipe your ass well with it. That's why I want to knock. Tip of the day never wipe your ass with your mask. Waterproof or not. Well, you gotta know where you're. That was terrible. Good, but it was so terrible. people like a prefer a hammock you set up your tart under there you hang your hammock and then you take your hammock down under the tarp everything's dry no messing around with this while it's soaked and raining So once we got off the river, I switched to this Algonquin uh, all carbon paddle by Werner. And it's just a dream flat water paddle. Um, it just weighs absolutely nothing. It's got a little bend in the blade to give you a lot more push out of each paddle stroke. And uh, it's just a really nice performance paddle. So it's definitely, um, better for just kind of making distance on flat water as long as it's not wavy and sketchy uh, than than the other one I was using but the other one's more robust and a better all-around paddle that can kind of be used for anything so it's good to have both combinations on a trip like this And now we're paddling Hobart Lake through another channel up into Tupper Lake where the hike for Maple Mountain begins. Uh, normally Maple Mountain would be the highest point in the sky right now and I can't even see it. So 
I don't really know why we're doing it, to be honest with you. Uh, but we're already basically there, and so Heather's never done it. It's raining and all of that, but whatever, I guess. We'll probably just be in a cloud and won't even be able to get a picture because the tiny little hills around here are already in the clouds. So I was hoping it would clear up a bit and maybe it still will. So that's actually Maple Mountain over there. You can't see it at all. It's just in a black cloud. So that kind of sucks. Bella, Bella, get down. Bella, get down. Good girl. So we're just turning left up here to go into Tupper Lake. Right here, yeah. It's not to the beaver down. Pretty funny day to be hiking Maple Mountain. Like that, there's the mountain. You can see the outline of it, kind of through a thick, thick cloud. Gotta be it. This is it. Well, we're just at the trailhead for Maple Mountain. Uh, you probably, I guess you could have a worse day to do this, but not much worse as far as visibility goes. I mean, you probably even see more in a thunderstorm. So this is like a really misty, cloudy, everything day. Uh, you can only see just the base of um, the mountain. So you like can't see anything, but we're doing it anyway. So whatever it's gonna be fun <laughs> let's go there's an old uh bunk bed cot and what remains of an old cabin here pretty old by the looks of it not too comfy anymore <laughs> Super small. It's uh, just so lush green moss carpeting the uh, forest floor in here. It just really resembles uh, something like a BC uh, rainforest. It's pretty magical in here. Oh, look at the size of this blueberry bush. Yeah. You see how tall it is? Yeah, I don't really get that tall. Oh. That's just because it's thriving in here. Nice to do this even though we won't get the uh, view unless some miracle clears everything up. Uh, it's nice because we're not doing a portage and it's nice to just have a hike where you're not piecing a bunch of stuff. So it's kind of nice to come through here uh, regardless of the view and just do a nice little forest hike.
Heather was uh, just saying how it smells so good in here. That's actually one of the things I really like about uh, rain in a forest after it rains. It just brings out all these like, fresh smells of the pines and the leaves and everything. Definitely a nice walk, even though we've been blessed with all this liquid sunshine. but we're on the home stretch here. This is the highest elevation I've ever climbed. Actually, you climbed kind of a mountain in England, but this uh -huh. is a bouldery, wet, slippery rock. Absolutely no view. <laughs> and I haven't really told Heather that there's a crappy thing, I think, coming up, and she's pretty wiped, and hopefully she doesn't bail when we get there. Immediate divorce. I'm whining. I don't know actually with Bella if we can even do it. Let's check it out. Come here, Bella. Oh, I didn't realize it's so slippery. Oh, my God. Go back down and come the way me and Bella came. over there well we are really in the clouds now we're about 20 feet from the summit and it's uh, kind of nerve-wracking because all this rain is making all these rocks really slippery pretty awesome achievement coming up here I guess it's kind of cool being in the clouds but there's definitely no view well we did it! We summited and it's so freaking miserable weather out that you can't even see the fire tower from the top. That is very poor visibility. So the fire tower is behind me over there and you can't even see it. Whereas yesterday it was clear and I could see it from, I don't know, like 20 miles away at least. And you can see like about, I don't know, like 60, 70 miles or more in all directions from the top of this mountain, let alone the top of the fire tower on a clear day. So 
Visibility is worse here than on the lake, but it's awesome to say we did it. What do you think, Heather? Wow, that you, was intense. You worried about the... Uh, I'm pretty concerned about uh, the descent down. It's super slippery rocks. You really shouldn't be doing this in this weather, so uh, don't try this at home, kids. Yeah. Yeah, that last little ascent where there's a, a ladder to come up and uh, and uh, some slippery rocks, it's it's kind of dangerous um, to get down in this uh, rain. So you got to be careful because we're really remote. There's nobody around, so we can't hurt ourselves. So a bit of a risk doing that, to be honest with you. There it is. We did it. Did it! Unreal that I, we couldn't see it from literally 20 feet back. And now we can. Wow. So you can no longer walk up the fire tower ladder. I guess it just hasn't been maintained and it's gotten too dangerous without the maintenance. Um, I went up a few years back with four guys and it was blowing around pretty good up there. Um, but they have since removed the section of ladder where you could climb up. Probably just got too dangerous. So I'm kind of happy I got here when I was able to climb it still. Um, I'm sure it would still hold, to be honest with you, but I mean, that's what people did every day. That was their job. They hiked up here and they hiked, walked up the ladder to their uh, to their lookout. That was their daily chore. They also said uh, the door is locked up there. So they're not messing around. And uh, I'm sure they have good reason. Kind of disappointing, even though there's absolutely no view. It uh, just would have been cool to be up there. And it would have been a rush because there's a howling wind. And last time I was up there with four guys, there wasn't much of a wind and the thing was swaying around. There used to be four cables or more coming down, holding it as well, that have been removed. just like 20 pies worth of blueberries on this one bush. Let's bring some to Heather. Here you go, Heather. Mm. Blueberries from the top of Maple Mountain. Mm. Look at the size of those. Thank you. Help wash down this chalky protein bar. Pretty good, eh? The mm. size of some of those. Well, they're so juicy. Mm-hmm. Much needed right now. Yeah. I am beat. That was uh, quite the feat for old Heather. <laughs> Bella wants some. Haven't you learned to eat the blueberries yet, Bella? Look at the size of some of these. Wild blueberries, wow. And a big average size too. Mmm. Wow. You eating the blueberries? Okay. You like the blueberries? You eating the blueberries? She's just gorging on them over here. Bella likes the blueberries too. Everybody likes blueberries. Everybody. So another thing about Maple Mountain, other than the fact that it was used as a fire tower, fire lookout um, to spot fires, it's also an Ojibwe sacred site. And it's called Chi Beijing 
and it means where the spirits go. So if you do come up here, you want to be respectful and keep that in mind. And, um, you know, recognize that this is a, a very important place and uh, it means a lot to a lot of people. And make sure that uh, you're not up to any shenanigans. Time to go. Huh? I'm so about Bella, stay. Come here. Come here. It's a lot safer when there's land on the side of me. Uh huh. So do I. On the rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, same thing here. Here. Just like that. So this is the part, just come down on your butt, okay? See? There's one here. It's not the best. Here. Alright, okay. Come down. So this is why I think the ladder might be safer, because... See this? kind of hard. Uh, Are you sure? Because I don't. There's nothing to hold on to here. I'm gonna help you, okay? First foot there, right foot. Right here. I think it goes needs to be right left. Okay, right left then. I think you might be left foot strong, dominant, so. Oh God, this is terrifying. Oh, I can't make it up here. Here, give me, give me this part of you. Okay. Down to that. Oh, God. Okay, okay now. Oh, now you're going to come to this root. See the root that I'm standing on? Let's that root. Okay. Nice. Okay, Bella, go down. Oh, that's no problem, eh? Go on, go on, <laughs> girl, <laughs> sliding down. Mm, you got it. Some people are better at certain things, right? Yeah, steepness is not my forte. Feel safer to me than what we just did. This is all scary to me. It's a lot uh, warmer as soon as we got down off the ridge. You know, we're soaked and in that wind, it's uh, pretty chilly and you start getting a chill right away. Kind of adds to it a bit, but uh, it's a fun adventure. Much warmer down here. Fun adventure. Yeah, really warm down here. Look at this cave. What's in there? Go on, go get it. That is like a lynx or a bobcat. Go get it. In there. Go get it. Where are you? Are you in the cave? <laughs> go get it. Bye, Bella. We're gonna leave you to live in the cave now. You live in that cave. Are you a cave animal? What's back there? There's something in there. Good girl. <laughs> cool. <laughs> when you uh, walk up here, the trail passes this really cool kind of 
alpine style had water lake. Okay, we're gonna stop and fill up our water. Perfect little halfway water hole. We are almost back. We've gotten past like the really steep stuff and getting back into sort of um, towards the lake level. Still a few hundred feet, I'd say at least to descend, but the sun seems to be cracking this death mist. Yay. Yay. <laughs> um, too bad it didn't clear before we had reached the summit, but I'm still happy we did it and hopefully it clears up as we hit the water and is it ever warmer down here like i'm too hot and up there i was cold so yeah. that's what happens when you climb up and up as luck would have it as soon as we got back to the canoe the sun broke the clouds and blue sky showed up. I'm pretty sure exposing Maple Mountain. So we walked up in an absolute ridiculous cloudy haze and had no view. And of course, now that we've returned to the canoe, there is a view. But we did it. Say I did it. One, two, three. Most people would probably think we're nuts for just climbing it into a cloud. Like, what's the point? You're doing it all for you. <laughs> Look at your dreadlocked hair. Look at Heather's dreadlocked hair. <laughs> Look at it. Your hair is like one big dreadlock now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. I don't know how I'm going to get that out. <laughs> it's like a huge dread. Heather's got a huge dreadlock going on now. After just like two minutes of coming on a trip with me. That's what happens. Anyway, um, oh look, you can see Maple Mountain. You can see it now. Look, you can see Maple Mountain up there and you can see the fire tower. So when when we when we were up there we couldn't even see the fire tower from 30 feet away. <laughs> and now we come down and you can see it from here. Anyway, kind of funny. In the boat. Can you pass my paddle? Thanks. Back out on sucker gut. Um, we paddled out into uh, through those channels back the same way we came yesterday, and now we're in uncharted waters that we haven't paddled yet this trip. And we just checked out a campsite because it's getting on. It's 7:30, and uh, Heather didn't like it because uh, the campsite sucked. So I didn't really like it either. That's why we didn't like it. And um, so we paddled out. She's like, let's go to the next one. So we took taking a bit of a risk because it's almost dark and someone could be there, of course. 
but uh, it's it's beautiful and we got this nice tailwind again and just as that happened um, this gorgeous bald eagle just came and soared right over our heads This isn't that bad here either, but this like this is pretty, pretty flat this direction. Yeah. It's nice and flat. That root is off to the side of the tent. That doesn't matter. I'll come and look at the other one with you if you want, but I, I personally think this one's better. All right, let's set up. Is this the tent bag? Okay, Would you like something from the food barrel? Uh. Food roll up or something? Sure. Or a pepperoni stick, maybe? We make one of those desserts tonight? Yeah. Excuse me. You made juice? Mm -hmm. It's right there.
So for dessert tonight, we are trying astronaut Neapolitan ice cream sandwiches. And uh, yeah, it's space food. It's literally a freeze-dried ice cream sandwich, Neapolitan flavor. So let's check it out. Pretty much how an ice cream sandwich would, on the outside at least. And there she is. Nothing glamorous. Completely freeze dried. Oh, you got the strawberry. Tastes like ice cream. Not bad. I'd eat this in space. Like the flavors there, it's just a different texture, right? Because it's freeze dried, so it's a little bit chalky. But it melts in your mouth. Like the ice cream, it just melts. But it's it's just an ice cream sandwich. It's freeze dried. So it tastes like ice cream. It tastes like ice cream. I feel like it's kind of the kind of thing you want to let melt in your mouth and not crunch. Look. <laughs> <laughs> She's falling asleep. <laughs> 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 Excuse me, Mrs. Bella. <laughs> I'm not so sure about this gimmicky ice cream. It's pretty yummy. Yeah, pretty yummy. Normally if I have an ice cream sandwich, it's always vanilla. I don't know about Neapolitan. I've never heard of that. So see how it is when I get down in the strawberry. Right now I'm only in vanilla. It's pretty yummy. It's like a sugary treat. It doesn't jam in your teeth as much as I thought. That crunch. It, it's not as annoying and it's not crazy sweet. Um, I don't know. I can't decide if I really like it or I'm just like, wow, it's freeze dried ice cream. Like, wow, it actually tastes like ice cream. <laughs> or if like, it's something I'd actually like eat every day out here. I'm not sure. Um, I think probably a little column A, a little column B. Uh, yeah. Considering it's probably like a $20 ice cream bar, I'm thinking it sucks. This is an actual picture of uh, Apollo 15 mission to the moon. That is not the ice cream bar one. No. <laughs> 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 Maybe they did have this. Frozen in time, yet not frozen in temperature. When you remove the water from ice cream, what do you have? A delicious, crunchy, yet creamy sweetness that melts in your mouth. Sandwiched between two chocolatey wafer cookies. Mmm, mmm, good. There's the Apollo 15 mission. This one. Anyways, they're kind of a rip, but when you're out here with nothing and you're like me and you like desserts, not too shabby. Hey Bella, what do you think? Bella approves. You approve, Belly? Bella approves. You want an ice cream sandwich? Bella approves. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl, Bella. Good girl.
Is it time for your breakfast? Is it time for Bella's breakfast? Would you like a breakfast? Would you like your breakfast, little dog? Would you? Do you need your breakfast? Oh, you want your breakfast? Oh. So this morning for breakfast, we are going to make apple cinnamon pancakes. So we've got some apples, we've got some cinnamon, some cinnamon sugar, some maple syrup, and we're going to do up some pancakes here on the little stove. But first you just fry all the apples and a little bit of butter with all the cinnamon and it's just delicious. It's a nice little topping for the pancakes. It's nice to have blueberry pancakes, but we kind of do that often, so it's nice to change it up a bit. So I just cut the apples into little, uh, little slices. They fry up real nice on the pan. going to be probably one of the best breakfasts of the trip. We've saved it to the end of the trip, which is always a nice treat. Still got one more breakfast skillet for the last day though. Mm. This smell just reminds me of fall. You go apple picking. Got an apple orchard, apple pies, apple crumbles. I love fall, it's my favorite time of the year. Apple pie filler.
there you have it. Apple cinnamon pancakes with maple syrup. They may not look glamorous, but I'll tell you, they taste amazing. That's how you do it in the bush. Yeah, they're pretty yummy. They really are. A little bit of real maple syrup. Liquid Canada. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Canada juice. This is actually all we eat. This maple syrup here. <laughs> mm. So yummy. Beats that bre breakfast skillet. Don't get me wrong, the Mountain House breakfast skillet is good for uh, what it is and speed. But it's not apple cinnamon pancakes. No, these are so <laughs> good. You're totally right about it tasting like fall and reminding mm -hmm. me of fall. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of kilometers to paddle today in the big lake. It's kind of windy, so this will give us the energy to do that. Looks like we have another gorgeous day. Might rain at some point, but... Looks like we're going to start off with a nice tailwind, but then as we mm -hmm. round and we start getting into Lady Evelyn, it might be hitting us from the side. Right. Hopefully not, but... Bella helps clean the dishes. probably shouldn't have made pancakes because the wind picked up and there's just huge white caps out there I don't know if we should be paddling we're in a little bit of a sheltered area and it's a tailwind right now so we're gonna stay close to shore for a bit but when we round the corner we'll have to make a judgment call because I think they might be broadsiding us and we might have to just sit tight and wait it out because I don't want to paddle in this sideways uh, with the weight we have and the dog, it just wouldn't be safe. We got our life jackets on, we got stuff strapped down, but um, you know, this is the kind of thing you gotta deal with sometimes when you're out here canoeing. And uh, sometimes the big lakes are more dangerous than the rivers. Luckily, the water's really warm, but you know, we'll stay close to shore and, uh, and we'll just play it by ear, but you know, when the water's really cold, this can be very dangerous, so... Really strong wind and big waves. We're just out of those strong tailwinds, but we're now rounding a corner and we're behind an island and we're going to be blocked for a little bit of a ways. But as we pull out into Lady Evelyn, we could be against some major winds and waves. I'm not sure if we'll be able to make the crossing, uh, but hopefully we can just dart across and then tuck down another channel, which then will be sheltered again for a while until we get to another section of the big lake, which hopefully um, maybe the winds will have subsided, subsided a bit by then. But uh, we're doing okay right now, so it was worth the uh, the risk to uh, to push forward because of these little sheltered areas we can duck through. Look, you can see the tower up on Maple Mountain. That's where we hiked up. We hiked all the way to the peak of that, where that tower is. 
crazy, eh? It's hard to say, but it's that on this GoPro, but it's way off in the distance, right about there, that peak. Normally you could see it, all of this from there, but that's where we were, is up there just yesterday. It's kind of a cool feeling of, of accomplishment. Just pulled over here to uh, go to the bathroom at this campsite and just kind of taking it in. It's it's absolutely beautiful. It's on a, a sand, like, it's, I guess it's a glacial deposit of sand piled up here. Um, I don't know if it's part of an esker or what. Look at this site. Beautiful. Beautiful view of the lake. campfire, tables. There's even a really nice swimming beach here. Wow. Oh, so nice. But it's out there. And we have to go. I see some really, really big white caps back there. And um, I know the wind here, we're kind of sheltered, but when we have to make that crossing, I don't know if we'll be able to. We're probably gonna have to wait it out. Sort of unfortunate. Um, but, you know, I don't know what makes the most sense. It's almost like maybe we should just wait it out here at this beautiful spot, because if it didn't break today, we could just camp here try to get up early and make a break for it and paddle hard because once we get past that section maybe we could be home free um, but I think we'll move on a bit it would just suck to kind of get stuck at that spot and not be able to paddle tonight and not be at a campsite um, but I can see off in the distance the waves are really really challenging and not safe See, we're making it across, slowly but surely. The water's warm, our stuff's tied down. If we were to dump, well, it floats. If we were to dump, we would get blown into shore, not out to the lake. So, we have our life jackets on, and we're just taking it easy here. that way. I don't want one of these coming over us sideways. See that little island with the big rock on it? Yeah. Let's get there and pull up behind it, okay? Take a break. Coming in. There's 
one here, pile forward. Okay. Okay, just stop for a sec. Pretty dangerous crossing there with some serious winds. Made us both a little nervous. Uh, it kind of crept up on us. We saw it, but once we were committed, we just had to keep our line. And we're getting side side surfed and uh, side slipped, and you know the the waves were threatening to breach and crash over the sides. So we just kind of front ferried along the shore that we're going along into the wind and let it sort of push us where we were going. Makes us a little nervous. Um, this next section, we have to turn the corner and go the other way. I don't really know how it's gonna be. I'm not sure if I feel comfortable with that. I wouldn't feel good with these coming behind us. Paddling into it is okay. Right now we're safe behind a little island uh, it would suck to camp here, but we could. I mean, there's wood and I can make a campsite there. I don't want to have to, that's for sure, but we could do it. Um, the water is warm. We got our life jackets. We got stuff strapped down and we're paddling along the shore where if we were to dump, we would just blow into shore. So we'd be okay. But, uh, you know, we got to be careful. That's for sure. <laughs> of it because we're supposed to be out of here tomorrow and who knows it could be like this tomorrow so this was just just manageable we will see what uh 
what the next thing brings. If we can make this corner and get behind some islands, we'll be in a channel that will be safe probably till our campsite. So fingers crossed. Heather and Bella are making the best out of this situation. They've picked a warm, sunny spot to sit. Um, but we are officially windbound at the moment. Kind of stressful. We're considering making a bit of a run for it here. Um, just to get into a more sheltered area. If we had to camp here, that would really suck. And with each one of these big clouds kind of comes a ripping wind so if you sort of wait a little you get a tiny bit of a break from the gust and then you know that might give us enough time to get back in we're gonna stay close to shore if it's too sketchy we'll just get back out and uh you know we'll see how it is but we'll probably be okay all right let's go bella in the boat come on come on bella in the boat 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 down on the floor Good girl. Go. See that surfing? I don't want to do that on the big waves. Especially not sideways. Anyway, we're, we're all right. We're all right. I mean, it's not like our lives are endangered here. If we dumped, we would just float over there and get out, you know? Draw, hold it, okay. Nice, we did it. Oh, good job, babe. That was pretty wild. <laughs> Bella, you were a good girl. Very good. So now we have a ripping tailwind with waves that are manageable. Oh, this tailwind is awesome. So um, we've made it to a campsite. We got through some treacherous sections of heavy, heavy seas and big waves and wind. And we're contemplating, I think we're just gonna stay here because there's some bad weather moving in. The system is bringing these winds and we'd have to put ourselves in another exposed section to get to another campsite and we don't really feel comfortable doing that in a thunderstorm this leaves 18 kilometers to paddle tomorrow and we've only paddled 13 today so that's a lot and if it's windy tomorrow or bad weather and we're windbound we're gonna have to stay another day like we don't want to risk our lives for whatever right so it's kind of a tough decision but it'll probably be okay um so we'll try to break camp early tomorrow and get out of here before the winds start usually they start a little later in the morning so right. that's the plan it is a really nice site here so that's on the plus side yeah 
and 18 kilometers on the lake isn't really that big of a deal unless you're dealing with the kind of stuff we were dealing with today. It's a little earlier than we'd like to stop, um, but the next site is kind of a jump, so right. it might make sense. We got the tent set up, we got a few things set up, and it does look like it's gonna dump rain. I can see it's raining in different spots across the lake, and it's getting real black. So I'm gonna set up a tarp so that we can sit by the fire and be less miserable. If any of you are wondering, this is a Friska's Axe, um, and it's, it's awesome. It's lightweight and it's just tough as nails. I've had this thing for years and years. They've got a lifetime warranty. I spray painted it blaze orange, so it's less, um, you know, you're less likely to lose it. Uh, I took it with my brother Jim on the show alone, where we survived 75 days in one, same ax, and it's been with me in a lot of trips, and it has just been an excellent tool. Um, so, it's my go-to go to thing out here. But um, that's what I'm using. And I also have, which I use sometimes for batoning and pounding and splitting wood, taking pots off the fire, different stuff. It's a carbon steel. It's kind of like a machete, but it's not really. You can hold it close and you can carve. Um, you know whittle stuff we made a paddle with it on a loan um, you know you can do pry stuff with it and of course chop it's a great chopping thing and you can get it razor sharp so it's pretty good multi-use tool it is heavy so I don't bring it all the time but this thing owes me nothing neither of these tools sold me nothing and I've had them for years and they I just keep beating on them and beating on them and they won't give up uh, this one is um, made in Ontario, California. It's called Spec Plus Machete, Ontario. So I forget the company that makes it, but I'm not sure if they still make this one. It's pretty good. The sheath is pretty good. It lasted a long time, but these rivets gave out from the leather because I just have it soaked all the time in the canoe and everything. But it did last a long time. And uh, yeah, well-made, well-made tools. So it is a machete of sorts, but it's it's uh, not too long, so you can bring it, or you could hang it on your side, and it's just really robust, thick carbon steel, um, so it's a great versatile tool. You can actually do like fine work with it really well by just choking up on it here.
I mean, you're not doing any carving per se, but we did make a paddle. Uh, you can kind of draw with it too if you have to. Pretty awesome. sure this tarp's gonna hold it's a little precarious but I might tie a couple more guy lines off how's your height now uh could be higher on this side but pretty good it's great yeah that's great How's it looking? It is great under here. We have this beautiful view of the lake. We've got a fire pit right here and Ted put up this awesome tarp to keep us warm and dry. Good job, babe. Tomorrow for lunch we have a pack of jerky. We have our bars. What's for dinner tonight, Heather? We are having poutine, so potatoes, melted cheese, gravy. We're also gonna pair that with pasta. And we've got, what sauce do we have tonight? Carbonara, so it's like an Alfredo bacon flavored sauce. And uh, we also have a dessert. What's dessert? We bring desserts when you bring me. So we've got dark chocolate cheesecake. Backpacker's pantry. So it's a just add water and let it sit kind of thing. So that should be interesting. I'm pretty excited to try it. Uh, some of the other desserts have been pretty good. So yeah, cheesecake in the woods. I noticed that you had the biggest smile for the dessert portion <laughs> of the meal. I'm excited, I'm not gonna lie. When you're out here eating pasta every day, it gets a little tiresome, you know? It's true. We were supposed to eat a lot more fish this trip. Yeah. Um, normally, I'm eating fish at least every meal, so I don't know. Um, I've been blowing it in that department, just kind of moving on, and uh, didn't succeed with brook trout. Once we got out of those waters, I caught a, a walleye. But um, since then, yesterday, I didn't, didn't get something. Uh, because Maple Mountain and then it was just like a rush to camp and didn't catch something trolling and today it was similar just like ripping freaking winds not safe to be fishing and we didn't even make our distance no. 
let alone with our dog they get so excited over fishing like if we were fishing out there like caught a fish like forget about it so or snagged or you know what a dump so uh sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles but uh that's why we bring food maybe we should start bringing a cheese grater like a handheld one yeah like they don't have cheese graters on leathermans <laughs> Can openers. Bella looks very interested in what you're doing. <laughs> Don't be fooled, she's at her dinner. And sometimes I give up my seat just to give my seat to the dog. And I think something's wrong with that picture. I think that's true love. What do you think? It is. I love her. <laughs> love you, Belly. Are you a good adventure dog? Yeah. Are you having a fun adventure? Did you swim in Cabin Falls with us? Did you? Good girl. Hmm? We love you. <laughs> so it says you need two cups of water, combine water and gravy mix in saucepan, Cook over medium heat, stirring constantly until gravy comes to a boil. Simmer one minute and serve over french fries and cheese curds. That sounds like a huge pain in the ass. So well, this, this one says, um, for example, just trying to figure out whether or not we have to follow the instructions. It's usually a good idea too, but this one says, in a saucepan, combine sauce mix, one and a half cups milk, one tablespoon of margarine or butter, um, bring to a boil, whisking constantly, reduce heat, four minutes, whisking frequently, blah, 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 right? Pretty much the same thing, yeah. Yeah, so like, I'm wondering with this gravy, if we can just do none of that, just dump boiling water in it, you know? Stir it up, dump it on the, on the fries, you know? I guess we will give it a go Ted's way. <laughs> okay, I like it. What's his face uh, that was from Dexter? For a second. Mm, a second. Mm -hmm. Well, I've had more comfortable sitting arrangements for eating. My hip feels like somebody's kicking it <laughs> hard. But other than that, the food's yummy. Mm -hmm. What is to be said about the Backpackers Pantry dark chocolate cheesecake mix? Um, well, I wouldn't spend the money on it again. Uh, for one, they 
did not include the chocolate crumb topping in the bag, which was extremely disappointing because I feel like that's the whole point that makes it like a, like a pie crust kind of like cheesecake kind of thing. And it just, the package wasn't inside the bag, so we just didn't get that, which kind of sucks. So you add water to it. And basically, this is what it looks like. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> um, that looks like a bad case of the mud butts. <laughs> Oh, the flavor is not bad. It's not like eating like cake mix. Like it's not that gross with like the raw eggs and everything. Is it supposed to be like mix and then you bake something with it? Like <laughs> I know, I know. It says uh, just add water, add the chocolate crumb, and and serve. Wow. It's it's not bad. It's like a yummy pudding. I was just expecting a little bit more with the whole like dark chocolate cheesecake. Like it sounds all exotic and kind of, you know, delicious. But um, it is good. It's not like a bad flavor or anything. It's like a good chocolate pudding, but that's all it is. Um, they're not exactly cheap. So you can also just buy pudding at, at the grocery store, right? So that's Heather's review. Um, not really giving this one a thumbs up, but so uh, now that uh, we've eaten a bit more of this, it's growing on us a bit. So I'd say it's definitely better than like a regular chocolate pudding. It's a little bit of like a chocolate mousse chocolate pudding, but it's like a pretty good chocolate pudding, you know? So that's the updated review. We like it, but don't be fooled with the whole like fancy dark chocolate royale kind of like, you know, title because it's not that but it's a really good chocolate mousse pudding really good like you would order at a fancy french restaurant god no but like it it's like is it as good i'm as, eating like I'm, I'm still eating it and like, like it's better than a snack pack way better than a snack pack way okay. better than a snack pack but not like restaurant anything quality Right. Because there you can actually get a real dark chocolate cheesecake, you know? So, but better than a snack pack. So that's pretty better good. Better than a snack pack. Yeah, like it's better than eating like raw brownie mix or anything like that. Okay. I mean, you know, I'm not eating tons of it because like Ted ate a bunch of it, but like just a bit, you know, after dinner, it's nice little like cleanse the palate, sweetener, you know? after eating, you know, boring pasta. It would also be really good for playing a prank, like going to your friend's house mm -hmm. and like splattering it all over their toilet seat and <laughs> sink. You could do lots with this. Multifunctional. Bella doesn't even seem to care about it, so that's weird. Well, yep. Yeah. So that's uh, Heather's updated review on the uh, dark chocolate cheesecake backpacker's pantry. The end. Good morning. It's about 6.30, 6.45. Uh, me and Heather are feeling pretty stiff today. Um, today is our last day. It uh, hasn't even got bright out, but we've kind of, we want to get going quickly to try to beat the wind. There's already wind starting. So we're going to try to break camp quickly and get on the water. Uh, because yesterday it was just so crazy and windy we couldn't make the distance we wanted so today for our last day we're left with a portage and 18 kilometers to paddle which isn't ideal uh, but yeah we're feeling pretty stiff and sore so um, I think maybe we're getting old
Maple brown sugar and I'll just see one next. Are you eating the skillet today? You're gonna eat it? Hello, so the breakfast skillet. <laughs> so cute. Are you still are you still in the skillet? Oh, what are you doing? Come come give it back. <laughs> she just avoids that. Bella, that's that's your mommy's breakfast. Bella. That's Bella. not for you. Hasn't really eaten anything. She's being a bit of a whiny baby. Sliced peaches in a bag, resealable. Pretty good to bring camping. Mm. No! 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 She Bella. burnt all the fur on her. You can smell the hair burning. So our final campsite, hopefully, if all things go as planned. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> um, it, uh, we broke camp quickly. Um, the wind has started picking up already. You know, in hindsight, uh, in the future, maybe when we're really concerned about that, we should just jump in the canoe, eat bars on the go or something. But I think we did pretty good. Yeah. It has cleared up. Uh, you know the ominous clouds and so it's sunny and nice Yay. so so that's nice um, so it's, hopefully we can just dart through this uh, section that will be exposed to the wind and then it'll all be fun and games after that Yay! Uh, happy last day <laughs> not making the video <laughs> Maybe it will. Um, Heather's cute as ever this morning. Oh. <laughs> and um, yeah, nice campsite here. Yeah, girl. And we're off. Definitely not too bad at the moment though, eh? So the waves are building. We've got a tailwind, which is pretty good. So we're moving along uh, half decent here. But uh, they are getting bigger, which is a little concerning. Pretty good. Uh, we got away as early as we did because uh, I think as the day goes on, it's gonna keep getting windier here and uh, bigger waves. It's getting pretty gusty. The winds are getting pretty big. The waves are getting pretty big. We're just kind of beeline for that point and that island starting to surf us a bit. We're gonna be exposed for a little while here. Yeah, they're starting to surf us a bit. Yeah. And when, especially when you're a bit sideways, like 
they kind of curl and start to get up close to the gunnel. I mean, they're pushing us along, so we're moving pretty well. But, but they're build. Sketchy. Yeah, as we go, they're building, right? Yeah, crazy. Yeah, the brake wall of tires is not going to work. So this lake actually, uh, is one thing that's really cool is it's got all these eskers here. So these sand glacial deposits and uh, they're, they're river banks from, um, you know, sand that was built up under about a kilometer of ice back when there was massive glaciers that came and carved this lake out. There was, uh, you know, a kilometer of ice on this, where we are today. And there would have been a river flowing under that glacier and it left these river banks. So it's just pure sand over there. And the one section of the lake has just tons of them. And I've seen a few cottages built on small esker deposits or uh, glacial deposits and they're getting washed away. And they've made a few efforts to try to build some tires and stuff, but it's a losing battle. And uh, they're not very stable. So sections are environmentally protected for that reason, uh, because eventually, you know, with wind and waves, they will succumb to the elements, but, uh, pretty cool to see and it kind of when the, when there's something left there for you to see it kind of puts you in the place a bit of like wow that's you know that was here that was there was a river flowing under a huge glacier that carved this lake and uh, that's an old river bank from under there and here we are today paddling on it so pretty cool so we're just hung out here taking a bit of a break in uh, a little sheltered section of Esker Island. And uh, we made it through one of the windy, sketchy areas on our way to, uh, to the finish line. Basically what I'm trying to do is hop through these islands, do the crossing at the smallest section, then hug the shore. And once we're in a channel uh, out of the big lake areas, we should be home free. So we're making uh, another crossing here that uh, has the potential to be sketchy, but it's actually looking uh, looking okay with the wind direction. It looks like maybe we might have been already be through the worst of it and hopping through these islands. We're actually able to uh, sort of avoid, you know, the. Uh, the most dangerous sections. I think with the winds we had today, the sketchiest part was where we started. I think we made the right call, right? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Which one? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a pipe. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Bella, come here. Get down. She's gonna... Stay here. Stay. No. Nice. Bella. So a little change of lure and uh, hooked into a decent pike. First I was hoping it was a walleye, but you know, that was uh, wishful thinking.
We're pretty much home free now out of the dangerous windy sections of lakes and so we're just paddling down this really pretty channel uh, to a dam and uh, so we'll have a little portage around that and then we're pretty much home free it's uh, you know about a kilometer and a half or so to Mowat Landing where our car is. It's been a great trip Heather's done a great job and uh, Bella is uh, getting better in the canoe. Stay, stay. awesome adventure with my two girls and uh, it was it's been really fun you know it's still early in the day so I'm going to take a couple casts as we float to mow it and uh, just soak it in before the long drive home Unbelievable trip down the Lady Evelyn River. Just so awesome. I can't wait to get back up to Tomogamy again. Uh, it's just an unbelievable place and uh, I just feel really good after completing that trip. It was a lot of fun. Have a fun trip? Did you have a fun trip? Good. Good. <laughs> Good.